any meal a little more special. Believe it or not, you can make all these different types of rolls using one single easy to work with dough. In this video, I'll show you how to make the dough and then shape it into knotted, Parker House, cloverleaf, and butterflake rolls. The dough you use for all these rolls is soft and easy to work with, and it all comes together in a stand mixer. You start by warming one and a half cups of milk. You want it to be about body temperature. Remove the milk from the heat and add in your yeast and whisk it until it dissolves. Add in the oil, butter, and sugar, and whisk it again. Now let the mixture rest until the yeast rises to the surface. Should take about five minutes. In the bowl of my stand mixer, I'm gonna combine my bread flour, salt, and one egg. Fit it with the paddle attachment and start mixing on low speed. Slowly pour in the yeast mixture. Continue to combine it until the dough starts to form a ball. All our doughs together, so now we're gonna let it rest for about five minutes. Now we're gonna knead the dough. You're gonna wanna switch out your paddle attachment and put in your dough hook. Mix on low speed for another three minutes. After three minutes, the dough should feel soft and pliable. When you poke it with your finger, it should feel tacky but not sticky. Now we're gonna start working the dough with our hands. Unlike other bread dough, you don't wanna incorporate too much flour because you'll dry out the surface. So I'm gonna oil my countertop rather than dust it with flour. Put your dough on your oil. You wanna fold four corners into the center. Crimp them all together, then turn your dough over and you have a compact dough ball. You then put this in an oiled bowl to proof. Cover it in plastic wrap and let it rise until it's double in size. And then we'll be ready to shape our rolls. Believe it or not, it's actually trickier to explain how to do a knotted roll than to actually do a knotted roll. To start, divide your dough into 18 pieces. Use a scale to make sure each piece is the same size. They should be about two and a quarter ounces each. I'm now gonna start rolling my dough into 12 inch long ropes. Remember, our counter is oiled, not floured. Next, wrap the dough into a loose knot. You wanna have about two inches off each end. You wanna follow the natural line of the left-hand side and go down and around, and follow the natural line of the right-hand side and bring it up and over. Pinch the two ends together, and then shape it into a nice round. And now this goes onto a baking sheet that I've lined with parchment and sprayed with cooking spray. And just repeat the process for the rest of the rolls. Make a 12 inch long rope, form it into a loose knot, down and around, up and over, pinch, form into a nice circle. Once you've shaped all your rolls, mist again with some vegetable spray and cover loosely with plastic. Now just let them rise at room temperature until they double their size. Parker House rolls were created at the Parker House Hotel in Boston. They're a classic shape that looks a little bit like a calzone. They're also the easiest shapes to make out of this dough. 
First, I've divided my dough into 18 pieces like I did for the knotted rule. Then you're going to want to spread a little oil on your countertop. Take one of your 18 pieces and flatten it till it's about a third of an inch thick and about four inches long in an oval or an oblong shape. Brush the dough with a little egg wash and fold the right side over the left so it doesn't quite meet up with the left side. It should be about half inch shorter than the left edge once folded. Press the top side gently, just along the edge here, to seal it. Traditionally, Parker House rolls have a dusting of flour across the top. To do this, you just dip the top side of the dough into a wide dish of flour. Or, if you prefer, you can brush the top of the rolls with egg wash for a golden finish. Now we repeat the process with the rest of the dough. Flatten, brush with the egg wash, fold, seal, and dip. Once you've shaped all your rolls, mist them with cooking spray, cover them with plastic loosely, and let them rise at room temperature until they're double their size. Cloverleaf rolls are another classic shape that are really easy to make. These rolls are made in muffin tins, so I'm going to start by misting the muffin tins. As with the other rolls, I've divided my dough into 18 pieces. You want to start by shaping each piece into a nice round ball. To do that, cup your hand and press your thumb snugly against your index finger. Then you want to make a circle and push the dough into your counter, almost like if you're trying to screw it in. The ball should just pop right into your hand. Now cut each ball into four pieces with a bench scraper or kitchen shears. Roll each quarter lightly in flour, and then position them in the muffin tin as if you were forming a square. Repeat this process with the remaining dough. Roll into a ball, cut into four quarters, Dust lightly in flour, shape into a square. As with the other shapes, mist them with cooking spray, lightly cover them with plastic, and let them rise at room temperature until they double in size. Butterflake rolls with their fan of layers brushed with melted butter are another popular shape. And like clover leaves, they're made in muffin tins. So I'm going to start by misting my muffin tins with vegetable oil. These rolls are slightly smaller than the other rolls, so I've divided my dough into 24 pieces. Then we use the same method that we used for the clover leaf rolls to shape them into nice round balls. Remember, cup your hand, keeping your thumb snug against your index finger, and roll. Now we're going to use the kitchen shears to cut almost all the way through the top center of the roll, leaving a quarter of an inch uncut to hold the two halves together. Next. Make two more parallel cuts on one side of the dough, and two more on the other side. So you'll have six sections, each about half an inch wide. Put the dough cut side up in the muffin tin. Shape the rest of the dough the same way. Roll, cut into six sections, put in the muffin tin, and brush all the layers down into the cuts with melted butter. And of course, just like all the other rolls, they will need to proof until they are doubled in size. Just before putting the knotted rolls in the oven, brush them with egg wash, and if you like, sprinkle with poppy seeds and sesame seeds. The baking time and temperature will vary depending on which shape of rolls you're making, but with all of them, you'll have two muffin tins or two baking sheets, so you'll want to swap the position in the oven and rotate the pans about halfway through baking so they all brown evenly. No matter which shape you choose, these rolls will be a big hit at the dinner table. Mmm. They're soft, rich from the butter and milk, a little bit sweet, and perfect with some fresh butter. Mmm.